Welcome everyone to Boom Mike Banter. This is episode two. I am Nick. Followed with me today is an extremely special guest. I am beyond honored to announce uh, Luna. Hello. <laughs> How have you been? Um, I've been pretty good. I have a more important question for you though. Yeah, by all means. Which starter are you picking for Pokemon? Ugh, oh my god. So, I mean, okay, so first of all, Sword and Shield. Like, I'm just amazingly happy on the names. Are you, which, you know which one you're picking, right? I, I'm picking Fire. I always go Fire. Score Bunny looks dope. I'm with it. The bandage yeah. thing's got the solid. Well, I'm nervous, though, because it could be firefighting. Even if it is, tell me this isn't the first worthy one since Blaziken. Yes. Very, <laughs> already, already by the appearance, 100%. Oh, if, if anything, though, too, like, the two that I'm praying for out of it are Fire Steel or Fire Electric. Ooh, fire Steel didn't appear... Uh, I, okay, so I was thinking that Fire Electric... Mm -hmm. I, I saw this whole Reddit theory and everything on Fire Electric being, like, electric guitar kind of focus if he doesn't go uh, soccer. Oh, okay. Because Grookey, Groove Monkey, the whole drummer deal yeah, thing yeah, going yeah. on. But then Sobble literally has no musical reference that I could pick out from the name and discern. So, mm -hmm. like, who even knows? Yeah, Sobble's going to be a really interesting one because the two that I was seeing speculated because of the translucent setup could be ghost dude i would love if it's ghost type but i almost feel like we're just going the kecleon route that's it's so lizard that's what i was thinking too i was thinking the exact same thing so it, it they could do something weird and have it be like water normal and then do the kecleon type ability thing because um because greninja did that too mm -hmm. so they could they could kind of copy and paste that which would be a total cop out but it's not like they haven't copy and paste of firefighting for the <laughs> yeah, for fucking million times. Yeah, so. every gen forever. Uh, that's fine, though. Yeah. So I'll say with the invisibility thing, though, I really think Sobble's probably going to have that involved in whatever his, like, unique move is this time oh, around. Oh, yeah, yeah, And I think that could be a lot of fun because I'm already, like, such a big Mimikyu and, like, Shedinja fan. Mm -hmm. That, like, pseudo-protect option thing is, like, hands yes. down my favorite option. Oh, so I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like Sobble's probably the one I'm going to pick. As much as I love well, Score Bunny, it's such a good Pokemon. I mean, girl, the the internet's been exploding over Sobble. It's like Sobble's so been the sad. one. Sobble's a hundred percent been the one. It's because everyone can just like identify with the anxiety in his face, the look <laughs> on his face when he popped out of the fountain. All of us were just like, "Oh, <laughs> that's me." Okay. Of course, it would be the only one with like invisibility and like awkward. Like, it's it just, just like, uh, it checks out. And then Square Bunny is so confident, and Grookey's like doing his own thing, and yeah, Sobble's Grookey's chill. The whole internet. That's it. That's <laughs> just the rest of it. Everyone's just gonna nickname Sobble it me. <laughs> yeah, honestly, it, I oh man, don't even get me started on what nicknames I'm gonna pick for him. I I do hope that they follow the classic route of being or not classic, I should say the yellow route of being able to get all the starters. Yeah. At some point, but I don't think they're gonna do it yet. No, yeah, I think they'll do something weird. I'm what I'm hoping they do is something like they did with uh like X and Y. They didn't do it in Sun and Moon, which I thought was really dumb. But uh, in X and Y, like. When you beat the Elite Four and then you were doing the post game stuff, they gave you another starter. And then if you did like a whole other stream of events, you got like the so last smart. one. Yeah. And I mean, like, the yellow route isn't bad being able to just pick them up as you go. But by the time you pick up Charmander or whatever, by, well, I think he was the first one you get. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. by the time you pick up the third starter, <laughs> you have Pokemon that are three times where they should be level wise. Yeah. I just, yeah, yeah, that's true. Oh no, Charmander was the Charmander was the first. Yeah, he's become a in the yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, I just realized that. I was thinking that same page though. I thought for some reason it was like after Cerulean City, but and then Cerulean City was the dumpster pick because then you got <laughs> then you just got the rest of them. Uh, yeah, like, Here, I mean, so I'll say this much: I traded a Dratini from uh, Pokemon Go into Let's Go Eevee. Oh, okay. And it was the only one that I took from the Safari <laughs> Go Park mm -hmm. zone. Well, because you can't get them back. No, right? at all, which is fine, because yeah, it was just yeah, a throwaway yeah. Dratini from Go. I don't even use it anymore. Mm -hmm. I like a Scyther, and I'm good. But <laughs> <laughs> I I used that Dratini until the only Pokemon I had in my party that I was really using was, mm -hmm. like, a Rapidash, that Dragonite, and my Eevee. And the Eevee is just too strong. Yeah, yeah. The, Those <laughs> well, abilities. Well, the, yeah, I was going to say, the extra abilities, it literally then has the water, electric... And uh, fire moves, right? For Z moves, which so, is so It goes dumb. even further than that. They're regular moves. They're not even Z moves. Uh, what the, the grass fuck? one has leech seed ability, and I think it's like a 90 attack. Oh so it just God. wrecks and then heals you. <laughs> not to mention the fairy one is the most broken. It heals your entire party of status effects. 
Oh, so it's like heal all bell. of them. Yes, yeah, heal bell. and does damage. What the fuck? It's the most broken shit. Oh my By God. the time I beat the champion, I felt so bad about having my Eevee in my party. Yeah, I yeah. retired it. It's just like never gonna be in my party again. Well, I can't fight people with that's, that. See, I heard. See, Let's Go is the only one that I skipped. And because of that, because it seemed like a game that was really on autopilot, and I was just, yeah. I, I still like wasn't sure about it. But no, not saying it's a bad game. It's it was just easy, one that I, but it's yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, that's it. It's just you can autopilot it if you use the EV. If not, yeah. you get a bunch of experience from like hyper catch and stuff. Go oh, catch out yeah, a bunch yeah. of stuff. But at its core, it was just like pure unfiltered fun. I do think too, though, that they should like even if it's not like a mandatory thing, if it's like an option in the upcoming games, I would love if they had like shiny catch rates and appearances the way that they had in Let's Go. Which, I thought that was dope. It, the way that they handled like the chains and stuff of catching stuff, I I ran around until I found a Rapidash that I just like liked enough. Yeah. I caught a wild Rapidash. That fact just <laughs> blows my mind. And the entire time I was running through that game, I was just thinking, oh wow. I did not expect to see that Pokemon in the wild. Yeah, exactly. Oh, is that a wild freaking Eevee? Are you fucking <laughs> kidding me right now? I've never even seen that string of words together. Because I went to uh, Cerulean mm. and was like, where the fuck is my Eevee? Because it's supposed to be at the top of the building with yeah, the Game Freak yep, peeps. Yep, yep. Nothing. Infuriating. And then I just caught a million of them. You know what it is? It's like how... Um... This is going to be such a weird example, but it's going to be how, like, with uh, Dark Souls 2 when they did Scholar of the First Sin, and all that version was was just fucking with people that knew the base <laughs> game. Like, they did like, it with oh, Resident Evil 2! Yes! It's like, oh, did you see a bunch of enemies and, like, always remember how you got horrified in this room? Yeah, they're just not there. Yeah. But they're in the next room! <laughs> yeah, they tried and there's, to, uh... like, less than in this time. Or, like, <laughs> Resident Evil 2... The idea of people, like, knowing where the scares happen, I'm like, how do you, other than, like, X just popping through a doorway, how do you remember, like, oh, that's right, this is where the zombie busts through the window? Yeah. No, I'm jumping left and right at that fucking well, thing. I can't do it. See, and in this one, because I've been playing it and loving it, but, like, the the one thing that I always find weird, I'm, I'm exactly on the same page with you on that, like, because now it's over the shoulder... Like, I would understand in the original game, because it's all preset cameras, so you know, like, they kind of baited you all the time of, like, hey, this window is literally the front-facing thing. So it's like, your big problem. Yeah, yeah, like, get fucking ready. But, yeah, they they totally, with it being so, like, personal now, I don't, yeah, I, I don't know how people memorize that. Unless they played it that religiously, and, I mean, kudos to them, but, like, yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> I know specifically of a dude that talked to me about it told me he played through both sides of the stories at least four times. Oh, shit. Now, I love video games. God damn, <laughs> do I love fucking video games. But That's a lot. I, I literally can't think of the last time I replayed a game. Really? Not even new game pluses. Really? Not, not to completion. Huh. I'll get so far, like, even oh, okay. even Skyrim. I okay. Even, well, Skyrim's a whole... I mean, that's a whole... I never even finished game. the main quest because I get sidetracked by all those freaking so side shit. quests, yeah. which is fine, whatever. But at a certain point in time, like, I can't even go through Persona 5 for the New Game Plus, despite well, it being a perfect game. Yep. I So, Persona 5, I got through all the way, and that took, like, three months. Like, three 60, months, 80 hours, easy? Oh, yeah, easy. So, like, so I put, like, 60 hours plus, got through it, and then I started a New Game Plus, and even in the back of my mind, I was like, oh... Well, it's going to be way faster because I can skip all the dialogue. You know, or at least the stuff I yeah. want to. You know yeah, I mean? you can, and I can fast streamline forward. it. Yeah. yeah, so I was like, that already cuts a huge section of the time. But then I was like, oh, fuck, I need this. Because I was just doing the battles, and I was like, fuck, this is kind of it's, boring. Yeah, it's, the battles don't make the game. It's literally the whole dialogue, and that's why that's the majority of the game. Like, some people argue about that, but I'll fight anybody. Yeah, no, that. honestly, that's I'm the kind of person to skip dialogue. Like, it took me everything I had not to skip cutscenes in fucking Kingdom Hearts. Everything I had, uh, they're 20 minutes long, and you're like, you just recapped all the Dream Drop Distance. Like, I just yes. had the whole thing in one dialogue, uh. please. So then I'm looking at situations like Persona 5 where mm -hmm. I have all my um, my social skills maxed yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, I romance the teacher the first time through here. Good move. Now I should do it a different way. And then I go, oh, well, the beach trip in Persona 5. If you romance the teacher beforehand, you get special alone time with her. Whereas, yes. like, otherwise you don't. And I went... Well, I don't want to fucking do this again. <laughs> I don't want to go romance her a second time, yeah. knowing this is the second and only time I'm going to play Persona again. Mm -hmm. So I stalemated myself right before you find out that she's <laughs> Becky the Maid, because I just want to, like, st I, I just haven't made my mind up yet. <laughs> and it's been eight months now. 
I'm never gonna go back, but that save date is on my system. The disc is at my house. Like, yep. it's always gonna wait. Yeah, yeah, it's there. Well, okay, so two things for that. One, that is the beyond quintessential. That's like top tier first world problem. <laughs> for like, real. For real. I don't know what to turn on my. It's the hardest part <laughs> of my day is deciding what persona life I want to live. <laughs> And, uh, and the second thing, though, is I wouldn't fret about that too much because we are pro- – it's, it's probably not going to happen until, like, first quarter of next year. But we are going to get Persona 5R, I, mm, which will be awesome. It, it, oh, my God. I, yeah. That – the on uh, pop figure – Yes, yeah, that yeah, yeah. is one of the only ones I pre-ordered aside from some of the community ones mm-hmm. because just looking at it, I'm like, she is inarguably one of the coolest characters in your party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm waiting for that Makoto pop. Oh my god, she, yes. she's my queen, and yes. I live for her. It's that same. Thing. The oh only reason god. I didn't romance her in the first yeah. game is because, or well, the first run, Play through. Yeah, I was yeah, intimidated. I she's too perfect. Yeah, I just needed a moment. I, I argue about this. All the time with my friend. <laughs> we talk about it because he is uh, in love with Futaba's character. Okay. Just swears that Futaba is... And I think the problem is that as a video game fan, yeah. you want to like Futaba the most. Yeah, she, but... you, she appeals because you're mm-hmm. like, mm, I finally have this person in a video game that's worse than I am about video <laughs> games. Oh, thank God that we have Medjed here to uh, prove that I'm not the worst one yeah, playing yeah. a Persona game in my adulthood. <laughs> No, yeah, I so on both on both my playthroughs, I did Makoto first, because yeah, yeah, Makoto's Bay, and then I did I can't remember her name, but I got the uh, I did the nurse on the second one. Oh, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think my problem was that I never really used items all that much. Oh yeah, so well, it I was like I had to to keep. <laughs> to keep exactly. the romance. I was buying drugs just to fuel my romance <laughs> with the nurse. I don't need that. It, it that it strayed me from her because I was like, well, as good as it is to have those like oh, revive sure. items and stuff mm-hmm. later on in the game, it sure, doesn't. Yeah. She is a cool character, but her and the reporter. I was yeah, like, I just yeah, want to yeah. be like best bros with these girls. Like, yes. these are my girls. Like, if I need to chill <laughs> at a bar randomly, yes. or like, yeah, 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 or you know, pick up some drugs from mm-hmm. the local actual doctor. <laughs> oh God, what a dumb game! The one, the <laughs> <laughs> like, what? My favorite part about Persona, because like five wasn't like by any means the first one to do this but like it's so funny because when you talk to other people that are into persona and it's gonna be so funny for anybody fucking listening to this who hasn't played persona like first of all they're not gonna know what the fuck we're talking about and second of <laughs> all they're gonna, be... <laughs> well, second of all, they're gonna be like you they? fight demons <laughs> <laughs> and that's on top of it too it's like you 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 talk for 35 minutes about the relationships and then five <laughs> minutes of like oh by the way do you fight the one hell demon in the sewer like turn by turn based uh, combat ass. where you fight a dick chariot <laughs> I live for video games. This is everything. That's oh my god, that whole uh that whole fucking dick cherry thing too. I still can't fathom that that is the second ever persona <laughs> statue made. They made a statue it's, out of They know what everything. they're about. They, they know <laughs> they what know, they're about. They fucking know. And they put it in every fu- did they I don't think they put it in 5 though. What? The dick cherry? Yeah. It is 100% is it a boss. Yeah, if you um it's one of the last of the uh oh, what is the place called? Why am I spacing? The, the underground hell state yeah, yeah, yeah. that you go through. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. one of the last missions that you do, I believe, where you go down and, like, you, like, fix one of society's issues. Yes. And yes, it yes, is yes, the yes, dick yes. cherry. And I yes. remember going, like, I thought I'd make it through the whole game without this. Yes. And here I fucking am for doing side quests. I forgot because... Mementos. For, for me, yeah. Sorry. For me, <laughs> I, put, um, I put it off. And then what is it? Like, when you get, like, the full ending, you have to go, like, even if you didn't go down all the floors, you're going down all of them. And then that's when I fought it. I was like, I wasn't... I don't want this now. Like, yeah. So at the end, I was like, this is, yeah, I'm this good is ruining. Right now? I was like, this is ruining so much for me. Like, oh, Jesus Christ. I so, just live for it. <laughs> so, so uh, Luna, I have to, we have to talk about something major because this is the, uh, I have ulterior motives. This is the true reason why I brought you on this podcast. Um, we haven't talked about Kingdom Hearts 3. It's because there's too much to talk about. They're really, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm shaking my head the whole time. So, all right. So right out of the gate, Oh, how about this? How about this? So, what did you feel the minute you had the game in your hand? Because uh-huh. you've been waiting. You've been waiting just as oh, long man. as me. So, like, I, wa- I want to just, like, hit, hit me with these three things. So, like, the feeling you had the second the fucking game was in your hand. Like, you didn't open it yet, but the game's fucking in your hand. About midway through, which I, I already know the answer is going to be for there. So, we'll say midway is 
right at the last... No, no, because that's not the midway point. Let's say, like... <laughs> There's no say... midway point with Kingdom Hearts, are you kidding me? <laughs> no, let's say, let's say you're in, like, one of the fucking Disney worlds. It's not going to be the end of the game. And then you're fucking feeling after the fact. I don't doubt it. Okay, for starters... Mm -hmm. Oh, man, the nerves. Holding that disc in my hands... Like, the case wasn't a big deal. Because, you know, you see them all the time, who cares? Mm -hmm. But holding the disc... All I could think is, don't fucking fail me. Because <laughs> I've just been waiting for too long, and I knew, I knew what they were going to do. It was either going to be, here's 140 hours of cutscenes, but yep. it's a long game, and you're going to be playing this forever. Like yep. how Kingdom Hearts 2, you could play that game trying oh to do all the synergizing God. and everything, or for or synthesis, yeah, yeah. Synerg whatever, yeah, synthesis. for eternity, mm -hmm. and then Kingdom Hearts 3 was just like, <laughs> it could have been so short and it it was yeah. uh so about halfway through we'll say like midpoint being like going to the second galaxy area. sure yeah perfect because because you know third tier keyblade that that's a big deal it keyblade is. graveyard even with all the extra shit that's that's a big moment but mm -hmm. being halfway through i just remember going like <laughs> it's the only moment <laughs> touche <laughs> of all the third galaxy <laughs> Did you want to go to a barren wasteland just riddled with shit you've seen since birth by sleep? Like, that's no big deal. It, oh, I just gotta no. say, halfway through, I realized I fucking love the gummy missions this time around. I did well, all of those. They clearly of they clearly focused a lot more of this game on the gummy missions. <laughs> There's so much more. I don't know There's why, so much more. but they, they certainly did. <laughs> I, and I don't think I speak for everyone when I say this, but I think it's the majority is on... On my side here, they could have just been like, here's your teleportation to the next oh, world. You don't yeah. even have a gummy ship. And oh, we would all have been yeah. like, all right, I'll trade that for another world. Yep. Well, that's kind of like, that's what's so funny too. Because like we had games like Birth by Sleep and stuff where, yeah, we were pretty much just jumping world to world. Constantly. And nobody, I mean, I don't think there was one person that went like, uh, 8.5, could have used more gummy missions. Where are my space Legos? <laughs> <laughs> They're gone. They're gone and you should be happier for it. Yeah, that 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 first part, like right out the gate, yeah, that already really threw me off. But okay, so just quick, because I mean, like we're gonna go, we're gonna go really in. So just like initial mood when the credits hit. Okay, initial mood when the credits hit, I went, oh fuck, <laughs> I still have lucky emblems left, <laughs> and that was the only thing I thought about until I got the end of them. That was it, and I knew yeah. at that moment that. It was lackluster compared to two. Yeah. When I realized the only thing I had left to do after beating the game at level 68, mind you, mm -hmm. not even like high level. Oh, yeah, yeah. All I had to do was the lucky emblems and picking mm -hmm. up maybe like 10 treasure chests. Yeah. That was it. Mm -hmm. it. There was such an exploration element. But then half the time, if I'm not lost in the Tangled world, it was just me what? running around until I would spin the camera for an hour and a half and go, I think those stairs have circles on them. <laughs> Let's see. I have an entire album set in my PS4 of screenshots of things that I made to look like Lucky <laughs> like Emblems, emblems yep. but they weren't. They were like, good and, yeah, whatever. I was Kingdom sending Hearts. Snapchats too, like, while I was doing that too, going like, fuck you, Donald. Like, don't <laughs> tell me how to fucking live my life. I think there's a Lucky Emblem here. <laughs> where? Where is it? <laughs> Bitch, where? But, uh, yeah, I, I was, I'm on the same page. I was so utterly disappointed and the and i will say this too like the fan base is very split like <laughs> it's because we've waited for so long we have waited for so long and there's so many people i talk to that are like what do you mean like it it at least like kept with the themes and i'm like first of all no they didn't and on top <laughs> no. of it and on top of it like a lot of the games while it was progressing because like the, a really big argument that people have been using and I apologize already because we're going to be jumping around. The, the biggest thing that people keep using is like, oh, well, like, people are pissed off at the spaced off dialogue and, like, rando stuff. I'm like, or they, they always keep saying, like, oh, well, they did that too. I'm like, I understand that. But we have had four games since then, like, major To games, explain shit. <laughs> to explain shit and have way more elevated the mood. Like, replay Birth by Sleep and tell me there's bullshit pauses in dialogue. There's fucking not. There's Everything major, is important. Yeah. Everything. There's major stuff. And there's only, like... Anytime they do exposition is mad important shit to literally like the tie entire up the franchise. Story. Yeah. Exactly. But like all three like three was pissing me off so much because we just had like rehash upon rehash of like first of all, not even shit that mattered. Like not even shit that mattered, and then one of my favorite fucking cutscenes, I rewatch I've rewatched it twice because the first time I went, okay, because I was just playing it and the second time i went holy fuck this is how bad 
the canon is that they're that they have to literally write on a chalkboard. It's when um, <laughs> literally Riku's with Mickey. And they're fucking explaining. In the raining garden. Yes. Explaining to Sora on the phone. Literally yeah. explaining. Every, the story. Like, they're, they're the literally, story. They're literally explaining it because they're like, fuck. So, like, I can only imagine the designers were like, fuck. People are so fucking confused. And people keep getting confused of, like, Terranort as opposed to young Xehanort. And what the fuck that means for goddamn. And, like, why. And then they, even they kept confusing it more because they were like, wait. If Xehanort's old, why is Ansem and Xemnas young? And then, it, but then, like, didn't that fully was the point of time where he became a heartless, <laughs> and then everybody it split. It's oh. oh my god! And they literally did like fifteen minutes of just like fucking exposition and just literally trying to hold people's hands of like this is how it worked, and like even still, and then and I just love to, to top it off, and then Riku's like, yeah. <laughs> all right like even there was no now way. i understand <laughs> finally i who lived this am finally experiencing I, I don't know it's so weird when you listen to them explain these things because you catch yourself going like dude i know yeah i know i know i know i know mm-hmm. but then you think and if you type in anything about kingdom hearts on the internet oh yeah all your responses are what the fuck is going mm-hmm. on in this franchise yeah so for them to take that time to finally work with the exposition and be like, look, fan base who's 20 something now, yep. this is what we mean by this and yeah. this. But then at the same time, I've been a fan through all of them. Yeah. I got the PSP when I turned 18 with Birth mm-hmm. by Sleep as a gift. Yep. I got the 3DS for Dream Drop, same day yes. as you. We literally yeah, yeah. played it we all fucking day. We sat and played it together all day. I yep. raised those Dream meters, thank you mm-hmm. very much. And then... <laughs> I even found myself going like, oh, during the story. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about the fucking Terra reveal? Oh, my God. I didn't even know I didn't know that. Yeah. I legitimately did not even realize that the Guardian meant anything other than a heartless background. So, okay. So, let's. So, this is one of the. So, there's like four different plot points at the end that I'm. That I'm happy, but yeah. super pissed about. And Terra's a huge one. Oh my on, god! On one aspect, so so this is the whole thing that uh, the game fails to explain, and even their quote unquote future DLC that's going to explain stuff will not explain. No. This. Oh my god! No. So uh, at that moment, so let's rewind it first. So before we have that fight, we have the pseudo imaginary retcon <laughs> where they kill everybody, right? And right before they kill everybody, they fight Taenor, and who the fuck shows up in the middle of the fight? Terra in fucking full blown armor. Yeah. So first of all, Kingdom Hearts, explain like yeah. what the fuck. So first of all, is Terra still running around in a separate body in an embodiment of armor around Keyblade Graveyard like a wandering ghost? Because at the, the end armor. of two, we had that secret fight in Final Mix where he fucking fights his armor. So I was under the impression that that, that was Terra. Yeah. That a piece of him like there essentially like I thought of it this way. Like, his soul was, like, essentially split into, like, two parts. And still, like, his main part was in the body. But a fraction was, like, left in the armor. Almost almost kind of like a full Metal Alchemist thing. Like, a little bit of a spirit's, like, in the armor. Oh. Go ahead. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, go ahead. This real quick. You, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then we're going to split this thing open. So, like, so that was what I had envisioned. Right? Yeah. So then at the Guardian part, I'm, like, like, I'm the same where you're at. I was, like, fuck like hell yes that totally explains how ansem's able to have it like the the heartless ansem's able to have it in the first place that totally makes sense but i was like wait where the first of all where the fuck then is his armor and then why doesn't it ever show up in this variation because we retconned it and then have a variation so like in theory because this is how bad this is how rushed the ending was and they didn't tie up loopholes they don't show his armor do anything in the new ending and Technically, like th- uh, obviously, of course, they're gonna clean it up in some random way. Yeah, it's not gonna yeah. make sense, but in theory, his armor is still around with his fucking stretch Armstrong keyblade. Yeah, and he's just off somewhere because they never do another variation of it to explain it. So now, now here's oh, a yeah, yeah, here's a theory I'm gonna toss your way. Oh god, Kingdom Hearts series, let's do it. Okay, so <laughs> Terra, mm-hmm. when having his body taken, yes, turns into the Guardian. Yes. Which is notably a what? Heartless. A heartless. Yeah. What happens when you make a heartless? I know. Yeah, nobody. Would you armed, think yeah. that the armor is his nobody? Because, now, not his nobody as the armor, yeah, but yeah, in yeah. the armor. In a the Vanita armor. situation. Well, secondary Terra. So, it could. The only reason I can actually squash that one pretty quick 
is... Because there's no way Kingdom Hearts would think that hard. That. <laughs> that. Well, they would, but they'd have to make a whole other game <laughs> yeah. and then and then pre-retcon oh. explain how that, how that happened. No, Rebirth the, by uh, sleep. The only oh, re- they did that. The, yeah. <laughs> 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 they got me. You got got. But, uh, no, the, the only reason that that wouldn't work is because in the fight at the end of Birth by Sleep, Terranor knocks a piece of the armor off, and oh, it and shows that his body's hollow. Yeah, okay. So they do, but here's the thing, though. In Kingdom Hearts 3, because they're clearly not tying up loose ends, in theory, there could be a body in there, but if it is the one that's based off Birth by Sleep, like they've been doing... It's not Terra. Yeah, it's not... Or, or physically... It's not physically Terra, but his I mean, spirit's in there, so I don't know If it's an Alphonse situation where Terra is embodying both I, the Guardian I, and I, that, that's a done deal. That yeah, is the dopest character I, in the franchise. I would have been, that's what I'm saying. That's it. I would have been so on point with that, but they just fail... They fail to explain that. Like, and it bums me out so much. And the other part about Terra, the, the the really big one, and it hit me right at the end of the game, which was, like, so glaring for me, I couldn't even then appreciate the ending, is when we get Ericus, who doesn't show up from heaven, which I would have been okay with. Yeah. If he seriously... Just I, I, descended hand Christ, from the sky. Hand to God, I would have been okay with it. Like, if he would have yen sitted and just fucking blah, That's fine. just fucking yeah. showed up, I would have been fine. The problem is he comes out of Terra. Yeah. So let's... Let's clarify this <laughs> yeah. again. Terra is within his own body, not ten minutes before, fighting with Xehanort for fucking a decade, fighting with his own body, and you're telling me in his fucking pinky toe, Ericus is just chilling out going, Hanging out. yeah, I'm gonna let them two fight it out, but like, once they murk this bitch, that's when I'll fucking make my embodiment outside of him. I'm like, are you, if, it, if he would have came out of all three of them, like yeah. if it would have came out of the embodiment Aqua, of their master, that would have yeah. that would have been fine. But the problem is, it solely comes out of Terra, and I'm like, and I understand the relationship between Terra and uh, Erica. So like, I totally understand that aspect of what they were thinking. Yeah, most definitely, but, but the connection's not, there, but still, but not. they're not piecing the lore together within their own, like within that game. We yeah, literally see that game's lore. lore, that game's own lore. Like you can just bottleneck that, and it fucks up still so much. So, so those those are the two really big ones, and then, uh, of course, uh, let's just bring it up now about the DLC. So, the whole other thing of you know we hear about a third way through the game that hey Sora we analyzed your body like eight years ago we did an X ray yeah. randomly because that makes fucking sense anyway. Uh, so so and we they ran his vitals for Tron <laughs> stuff I guess that so, yeah so we so we ran your vitals and uh, yeah we found like four different embodiments in you. And Shion is the one that they don't name. Yeah. Because they don't know her name. Because they don't know that she exists. But at that fucking cutscene, Shion, not like uh, Roxas, comes out of Sora. No. She's already an organization member and just shows the fuck up. And she was literally in Sora. Like that entire time. That entire time. Now, I will say that the way that they talk about replicas or replicants, I should say, yeah. and the situation with Namine almost mm-hmm. begs the question of, do they have access to Shion information purely through a replicant, yes. and then that Shion reconnects with the real one via Sora, or, oh man, do they just pull it out their ass? Like, I, I know. I'm, I'm so... that That's exactly right, because I would even, I'm, I'm so on the same page with that, if they would have done it, and this is what the DLC's, I, I can already know what the DLC's gonna do. They're literally gonna copy and paste all of the Riku, Dark Riku scenes that they did in 3. Oh my That's god. That's all they're gonna fucking, it's literally gonna be like fake Shion talking to like, if they do it that way. In the heart. Yeah, literally be like, uh, and then finally they link the minute the Keyblades clash, and then when yeah. Sora's crying, he's like, uh, she, and then he just knows her name immediately, and then same thing like fucking Axel. Axel's been weeping about this bitch. That he That's doesn't it. know they forever, and then him literally, for me. and then literally in a snap, just goes like, "Oh, she owned." And I was like, "Are you fucking kidding? <laughs> you couldn't even have like a like fucking yeah. like brain bending moment, and then everything snaps. Like you couldn't have but any I almost, of that." I, I would argue almost that I like it more in the way that it's just a quick "it comes back to him" scenario because it's the oh, this memory I didn't even know I was missing for the longest time. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I don't know the the way that I gotta give it to my man Haley Joel. He crushed yeah. the Sora this time around. He absolutely did a great job. And, like, I was, I will say, I was very... At, when I was playing 2.8, though, I was really nervous. Yeah. The voice sounded really very, shaky. Yeah. I so, like, with Ooh. his... Everything that they did in this one made me feel like Sora was growing up. This yes. entire game gave you a depth of Sora's character. And 
I'll go on record saying I used to like shit talk Sora. Mm-hmm. I hated him compared to Riku. I thought Riku oh, was yeah, the, absolutely. Even before Riku did the the mark of mastery the and dope passed, shit. Yeah, 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 I still was just like, there's no way that Sora is better than Riku. And then as I played through three, I realized that I respected him and liked him more as a character than I ever did. Well, you can tell too in three they way pass the torch. Oh my like, god, yeah. Way, I mean, like, Riku literally has, like, three moments. Riku's like, an adult. Oh, uh, He's th- walking around with Mickey doing adult shit while yep. Sora's learning how to walk and again. That's, and that's the other thing, too. Like, uh, again, for, like, the unteenth time, it's like, hey, Sora, you have to relearn how to fucking crawl again. And it's like, why are we going through all this? And then, oh my god. So, like, another major, uh, not about the plot points, but, like, an, another major issue that I have with the whole game in its entirety is, like, the game's caught up at, a, at about 80% of the Disney worlds, and then the last 20%, which is super rushed, is all the story. Let's just be yeah. real. It's fucking literally Fact. all, it's all the story. And, and not even the Disney parts of the worlds, just areas within the realm. Perfect. I'm so glad that you brought that up. That's exactly the issue that I had, which was, oh, we finally, I mean, we were supposed to get it originally planned for Birth by Sleep of a Toy Story world. Dope. What do they do? Oh, it's a Toy it's Story. A toy it's story. the Toy Story universe, but it's split into a fake one. Yeah. Where Andy World End with it. You style. Yeah. Of yeah, course. Yeah. A split. It's a split one where this one's the pseudo, not real one. And then on top of it, instead of having like a bunch of really cool, funny missions that could have been all toy related, Dark. like I would have, I just would have appreciated like just even something silly of like, oh, Sora and the gang are toys. And they have to get something from downstairs, and they have to keep doing like a pseudo bullshit stealth mission yeah. of like walk and then still play would take toy. it, yeah. yeah, and then play toy and then walk. Like With how many mini games they did? Yes, yeah. not a far and, departure. And how many fucking dirt mini? Like they could they could have done so many oh better ones with the material, yeah. and then they just totally Fuck shit the Classic bed. Kingdom. I'll oh say it right now. God. Fuck Classic Kingdom. It's a bitch. Yeah. Oh my god. It was. It's it's just ridiculous. And and so we get a bunch of worlds like that, and on top of it, they were so like Toy Story is the only one that technically on a on a string makes sense at least on a story plot point because Sora is with those characters the whole time Mm -hmm. they talk about shit and then shit happens but like when you look at like Tangled worst world by the way well Tangled was the worst world in the game so first I hate to say so generic so generic of just like the grassy greens it's it I keep joking around that it's Tarzan 2.0 it literally is they took the Tarzan level and just put a tower on one side and like Arendelle on the, the other. Ca- yeah, that's yeah, it. the castle, and like that's it. Yep, a hundred percent. It's not Arendelle. That's the frozen one. Oh yeah, yeah, shit. You're right. I don't know. That's fine. I, I really don't give a shit enough. Yeah, about whatever. It. Yeah, the fucking fine. the fucking place where you can swing dance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm gonna spin these people in a circle until I get seventy five thousand points. But yeah, but on top of it, like, there's so many. Like, I was rewatching because like once I played it, I was like, hmm, and then I felt weird about. it. I was like, no, I'm gonna rewatch some cutscenes just to make sure I'm not being that biased about it. But it makes absolutely no sense. So Sora jumps in, and they go, hey, by the way, look, this shit's happening. And instead of Sora, because there's a bunch of cutscenes that are happening with the actual Disney cast, and Sora... Alone. Sora in this one is, like, a weird special guest character in, like, all of them. And way more than what they usually have it. Like, oh, usually, my God. Usually Sora's, like, an alien. The, like, the, the entire Let It drops. Go scene. Yeah, oh, my God. And so... <laughs> I'll get to that in a sec. So, like, the whole thing is, like, he'll drop in... In most other Kingdom Hearts games, they'll be like, hey, you're a fucking weirdo, but, like, why don't you come on this adventure? And then they go through the whole adventure together. No. In this one, he breaks off, does a bunch of random shit, and then jumps back in. So, like, literally, he jumps back in, and then fucking what's-his-face is like, uh, hey, we gotta go fucking save Tangled. And I'm like, oh. And Sora's just like, all right. And I'm like, you're not even gonna fucking go, like, what happened? Who's at fault? Mm-hmm. What the From fuck who? happened? who? Yeah, exactly, like, exactly. He's just like, all right. And then Lark scenes like, yeah. We take bitches now. <laughs> yep. New princess is a heart. I know you were worried about the old ones from every other game, but surprise, we decided it doesn't matter right and now. And another, oh my god, even when they did that, another plot point that's so shit the bed, we're gathering another set of princesses? Bitch, you got two! Yeah. You didn't even get, like, any more! You got two of them, and you didn't even get them! Yeah. You didn't even get them, and there you're wasn't, just like, eh, There whatever. were not seven princesses in the entire franchise in three. Yeah! At all. Not even close. No. Not even close. Like, even if you count, like, Kyrie, like, even I if count you count Boo the pseudo ones. I count Boo twice. <laughs> because she is a princess <laughs> and she deserves it. <laughs> one with the monster's costume on and then one without. Shit. <laughs> which they didn't even that. have. It's which just <laughs> regular Boo is a princess twice over. <laughs> she has the least lines in the thing and yep. she still kills. Yo, please tell me 
you saw the comparison for the Zeta Flame whatever oh, the fucking God. donald spell <laughs> it's the second i believe was the the infographic that i saw was the mm-hmm. second most powerful spell to cast in the entire final fantasy realm yes 100 percent. and he just does it he just he just he just bops it he just bops it for, first of all yeah bops it like it was a thing and then on top of it just a little panted afterwards and and the worst the worst feeling for me this, this is what I hate. I'm serious. This is what I hate about this game, and I, I really do. They give you so many epic moments, but because of the way the setup is, it makes you hate them. Yep. So that that one is a prime example. I, I actually completely forgot about that. I'm so glad you brought that up. Because the minute he cast that, I went, oh my god. What a fucking amazing, even Easter egg. Yeah. Like, what a great, cool. what a great fucking concept. cool. What a great concept. And then what do you think two seconds later? Oh, yeah. There's no Final Fantasy anything in this fucking game. Yep. Like, they At do all. nothing. That's it. That that was their <sighs> nod after 70 fucking hours going like, I bet you still like Final Fantasy, huh? <laughs> Fuck not this, though. You want to see Cloud, a dude who's been in four of them now, I think, at this point? Yep. Yeah. Nope. He's not around anymore, despite yep. his literal recurrence in two of yeah. them. Can we talk about how this... Dark Infinity, what the fuck is that? The, the, whole the Secret realm. Boss. The, the Secret oh, Boss oh, oh, yeah. is the if easiest we, if, one if in we, the entire series. First of all, if we can even give it the credit no. of calling yeah. it a Secret Boss. Kirk Zisa is harder than this thing oh, tenfold. Yeah. Ten fucking fold. Oh, yeah. Let alone the Phantom. The, I literally the Phantom. I fought it five times and I didn't even have to heal myself in the last fight. It was the, broken. The Phantom has more strategy in its first Secret Boss fight than all of Kingdom Hearts 3 combined. The whole thing! Even, yeah. I get it, they wanted to do a lot with mobility, and I understand, but you yep. can't just sprinkle flow motion into every game and 100%. call it a new style. And especially, and especially too, like, when the flow motion isn't even as clean as it was in Dream Drop. Oh my you god, can't no. even, it's You a, can climb for eternity in Dream yes! Drop. You can get to the top of a well, screen without even doing anything. And the other thing, which I thought was so dumb, was in Dream Drop, it was, hey, let me do a combo... And then in the midst of a combo, if I'm near the pole, I can but, dash, and then it'll link me. What do they do in three? No, you have to stop mid-combo, walk around to break but, enemy contact, then dash, and even sometimes it doesn't work. Like, you have to... Uh, I have I learned after about halfway through, because I was talking to a bunch of people who were like, I can't fucking get it to work. So the <laughs> the way I've been relating, at least video game-wise, is you have to Mario Kart 8 it like the boosters. You have to glide near it, not at it. Yeah. And the game doesn't tell you that either. So, like, you just have to keep fucking going at it until you eventually learn it. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with that. Like, they... Th- the way combat's set up, they give you so many options, but then didn't feel the need to scale any type of difficulty to those options. Let alone the lack of synergy between the options. Every single two levels, you're getting something that's like, you can use this, or your ability you got two levels ago. Mm -hmm. Why? Why would you not? I think back to Kingdom Hearts 2, and the mobility and the ability list in general was flawless. Being able to max out Final Form and glide literally eternally Mm -hmm. just throughout the worlds just to explore and find the last things that you did, it wasn't even satisfying in this one. Yeah, and and a perfect way to, because we've both done this on Kingdom Hearts 2 playthroughs multiple times of like the forms, and I don't know why. First of all, I don't know why they got rid of them. I mean, we too much to code. We technically have them. Fuck the Keyblade forms. And that's what I'm saying. And on top of it, like except for except for the Ultimate Blade. Yeah, I, I got mad respect shit. for that one. That Ultimate, was dope. As Ultimate shit. Is dope as shit. It's just a sword. It's just a sword. It's just yeah, it's literally just a blade. But uh, the thing that annoys me so much, and what I loved about the older like Kingdom Hearts two was like the forms added the best RPG element. Hands the forms down. had levels. You boosted those levels to get other abilities, which made you keep wanting to do the forms, which yep. boosted the gameplay and made you want to keep playing more. What did they do in this one? Oh, well, we got rid of forms, but now you have weapon changes because farming shit's hard. Even though the fan base, anyone who casually played, gave up eight games ago, yeah. you only have a real fan base. Who loves the fucking farming in yeah. Kingdom Hearts 2? Literally, that's all we've done forever. And then they went, oh. And uh, uh, jumping on your uh, point of, like, flow of combat, they added a whole new mechani- uh, mechanic of, uh, why can't I think of it right now? God damn it. Grand um, magic. Attractions. Th- attractions. Fuck the you. attractions. And, like, here's my whole thing. I'm okay with attractions, at least the concept of, hey, we'll do Disney-themed stuff. I'm okay with that. 
My problem is... It's like a Gatling gun of attraction. Well, that, and on top of it, it's like, for n- not even going on how many times you get spammed with it. Fuck that, that. That's its major complaint, so let's just avoid the obvious Fair one. point. <laughs> um, the, the biggest issue that I had with it was like, oh... I'm doing a 16-hit combo, and I'm actually finally starting to get the flow mechanic. Like, I know to <laughs> glide toward the pole and, like, not add it. And I'm I'm learning the combat. I'm learning a really cool system. And you know what really, like, cucks the whole thing right there? Let's put a fucking little bouncy fucking raft <laughs> and just start swimming. I'm like, what the fuck is going Like, they just took acid in the middle of their combo stream. Like, it, like I swear to God, if you didn't play Kingdom Hearts, looked at just a cutscene of, of a combo... And like a blinked. real one, not the trailer one yeah, with yeah, the rock yeah. cycle. Yep, no. and blinked at the wrong time. You would go from like, oh, he's doing a basic combo to, wait, why the fuck is he on a weird gun thing shooting 15 bullets in first person? What the fuck game am I? Like, you literally forget what game you're playing. That's yeah. how quick It changes it constantly. And again, with the mini games, there, yeah. was, there was so many times where I was like, wow, the flow in this level is pretty solid. Even just getting to the end of the Tangled level mm-hmm. and, like, skating down those flowers and stuff. Yes. There's all these gratifying yeah, yeah, yeah. moments that even when they break up the monotony of fighting here or whatever, even going around the chain for stuff. But mm-hmm. I think back to Kingdom Hearts 2, which I, I swear that's all I ever do with this game. But No, but, it's, I mean, it's the best direct comparison to it. Yeah. It, and, it's, it's And a game that came out 14 years ago. Which is absurd. Yeah. You look at grinding for the <laughs> levels for Final Form or Wisdom Form, mm-hmm. doing the alleyway before the world that never was with all the Heartless was, oh, like, easy to skirt through yeah. using, like, thunder magic and whatever Mm -hmm. i've gotten to the point where like my girlfriend jokes about how i'll walk into a fight i'll cast thunder three times and it's over yeah against against the hardest shit that's all i do i literally couldn't even so i got the uh ratatouille Mm keyblade and i was like you know what okay i'm gonna use the chef's keyblade i'm gonna go see what the form changes are for it Mm -hmm. and i was killing shit too fast in the monsters inc world against the biggest (laughs) boss shit to even see the form changes I wasn't even max level at that point. Yep. It it literally just stalemates everything because mm-hmm. they just they throw they shotgun you with abilities that are overpowered yeah. instead of just compounding and making it more satisfying to do the stuff you do. Mm-hmm. The grand magic I swear by though. I played yeah. the entire game magic focused. By the end of the game, I had ten magic points higher than Donald did at level <laughs> ninety nine, and I would literally walk into an area, cast arrow or Erosa yeah, at that yeah, point Erosa. then Thundara mm-hmm. or whatever and then Grand Magic and just kill everything in a circle yep. no matter where I was mm-hmm. yeah no, no and, and that's the whole other thing too like they they give you so many they, I mean they dump so much stuff the best like when you were talking about like the way like the game like breaks up uh, the monotony of it I, I totally agree and like the thing that would have made so let's just kind of like pivot this and talk about how kind of fucked up the ending so the ending is literally, I mean, we hit the Keyblade Graveyard, and we get, I'll, I'll be generous, we get three hours? Not even. I'm being Not, really generous with that. If you count combat hours in the end game material. It's yeah. three hours. Yeah, really, really, it's like an hour and a half. Because yeah. it's, it's literally every boss fight, just back to back to back to back, and then literally, and I kind of, I get the concept of like, oh my god, let's just overload people with how fucking dope It's a this war, is. yeah. But... My my whole concept of this game, and this was me thinking about this the minute I started it, I kind of pseudo got disappointed because when we already saw like uh, the first like big opening, like big opening trailer, not for the actual game itself, but like uh, or n- not playing the game, but like the big one for it, um, we saw that the first place we're going to go to is Olympus, and Olympus is under attack. And they did a good job of introducing it. Yes, and my whole thought though was the minute we started seeing it, I went, oh. Because what my whole presumption was, and I honestly, this is just me thinking that this would have better been a better concept was, the Keyblade War should not have been at the end of the game. I think that was no. a huge fucking mistake. They should have started yep. with Xehanort popping into this world, just fucking shit up, and him going to all the worlds, fucking up everything, almost simultaneously with his 15, yep. you know, fucking shadow clones at this point. <laughs> Literally, Time traveling yeah, shadow clones. Yeah, exactly. But at least for this one, like, he's all in, like, the same spot, but... Him just going there, literally announcing the Keyblade War has begun. Yeah. Like, literally going, like, the Keyblade War started, bitch. Get fucking ready, because we're going to mark you at any time, because it's fucking because war. Because it's war. Because it's fucking war. And this this rules of, uh, like, terms of engagement that yeah. they have between, what, 21 people, maybe? Yeah. You're going to tell me they're so dedicated to this. These people, now, do not get me wrong. <laughs> the satisfying ending that you get of the, the reconnection of Ansem and Riku. Oh, yeah. Was untouchable. Absolutely. That moment was mm-hmm. so satisfying. 100%. So good for fans. But yeah. at the same time, I'm sitting there going like, fuck 
this guy. Yeah. He ruined your childhood. Mm -hmm. He possessed your goddamn body and handed it off to cartoon Satan. Yeah. And you're going to tell me that this entire time at the end of it, you're going to look at him like a shitty stepdad? Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, see, what I I thought of it, like, in a nutshell was, like, this is Kingdom Hearts' closest thing they're ever going to get to trying to relate to a toxic relationship. For real. Hands down. And literally trying to forgive... The toxic it's, person at the end of it. It's, like, by being like, ah, oh, I think I'm so, going to miss you. And I was like, I, like, that line could have been validated if they would have spent more time on that story. In at all. If they, at all. If even, if even, like, Riku had just as many moments with uh, Ansem as he did with Dark Riku in this game, it way more would have They could have gotten rid of Dark Riku. And yeah, that's me saying they, that they, as they Riku is my favorite character. Yeah. But they, so here's they, my they other so, issue with they the, so wasted it. the whole Ansem scenario, mm-hmm. they could have made him one of the parties to rescind his evil thought process. Fuck yeah. So easily. Fuck so easily. Yeah. Earlier than and even then, Vixen. And then how great would that have been too, to like then properly build back up? Like if he even would have said a line of like, I'm properly going to rebuild the name of Ansem. Yeah. How fucking and good there, would that have been? so much where oh. he could have reconnected up with who I'm going to refer as Diz because that's my boy. Yep. Even because Ansem the Wise, his entire interaction in this game is people playing hot potato with him trying to figure out where he's going to oh help the most. Oh my god, how fucking use, like how great of a character who could have presented more lore than anyone. He who built wrote, the fucking World Roxas lived in, my man. He did that. And, and you're going to make him wrote, into grandpa. He wrote the OG reports and it's like, yeah, I don't want to deal with fucking Uncle Dan. Uh, Move yeah. him over here and then For they just real. ship him Can everywhere. we teleport him around? I'm just not feeling as evil today. Like, stop. <laughs> what are you doing? Now, but, I will say, the development of Demix's character was <laughs> phenomenal. Every time he would pop up, I'd be like, oh, this is where he's going to get serious. And i go, nope. <laughs> Still not yep. benched. That's and the wor- And the worst part is, too, this is what, like, I'm still scratching my head over. The developers did say that Demix not having an ending to this game is intentional. Oh my god. The reason he's like kind of cut off and whatever is quote unquote intentional and they do have a plot point that is for Demix whether it's in the Shion DLC or a separate cuz that's the other thing too like Kingdom Hearts said this and they I mean they kind of like or Square Enix kind of like dropped this and they didn't really elaborate. So Shion is going to be the only paid DLC. We're getting other DLC for the for game free. for free. That yeah. I, I don't know what that means. That could just be challenges. That could be like what they consider to be like the <laughs> the like final mix version. Fuck challenges. Yeah. Just as an idea, immediately all I'm thinking of is the fucking Big Hero Six challenges, uh, and I don't want to do waste. the flash tracers yep. anymore. They are so those. shitty. I hated those. It, I feel like this entire game. I put those off to like last. Besides synthesis, because that obviously was going to take the longest. Understandable. I did seventy. Two and some change hours in this mm-hmm. game. Seventy three hours to one hundred percent and on proud mode, which is and, which is hilarious to even hear. Yeah, when you think it about took that. me eighty to get to level eighty in fucking Kingdom that's Hearts two, and say. that's like you're not even looking at the ultima weapon yet. Are you kidding and, me right and now? And first playthrough. Yeah, like let alone like when you fucking know. So playing through this game, if you would just cut out the cutscenes, yep, even even unnecessary cutscenes, we'll just even keep the important ones in, which, and then mini games, which you can't skip in this. Game. Yeah, of of course, <laughs> of course not. It's important that everyone at the end of this one, like, okay, we get it, because that's it. That at a certain point in time, it's like trying to explain something to someone and finally seeing the oh face and just knowing that you actually conveyed it well enough. But in this instance, it's us just going like, yeah, I got it. Like when you hear someone and you don't register what they say <laughs> we we are finally going square Enix, dude we got it down pat if you mm-hmm. want to give us something fresh yeah i'm with it i know everything that's going on mm-hmm. don't give me a pop quiz but i could like <laughs> throw down some facts no 100 percent. but uh but no but going on like a like i was even saying before too of like with the whole like the way the story should have went they just so they should have announced a keyblade war in the beginning and then every two worlds, like when we hit the the universe or the galaxy jump, we should have got one of those boss fights in the middle. In, the, yeah. Because the, the big, like, and I think you'll agree with me on this, like, one of the major things about any and any other previous Kingdom Hearts game, even spinoffs, the moments that hit you are, first of all, obviously, like, super impactful, and they have a buildup and a spacing of when those moments happen and when you can register those moments and those moments sink in because they take time to even after the fact give you the aftermath to like fucking breathe and go 
Holy shit. What does this game do? Hits you with 15 moments and you can't even appreciate them because you're killing another dude. Yeah. You're fucking like Game of Thrones and it's so fast. But Just then the worst literally part, chopping them down. And the worst part is they're not even Game of Thrones because like you murk them and then they go, oh, I have feeling. By the way, I'm like human now. And even though... Thanks and, for fixing me. And even though... Exactly. <laughs> and even though we took all this time to explain all this other bullshit... Because we're doing all this late game shit at the end, we're not having any time to explain this lore. Bye. <laughs> and like more Luxia for the first time. It's like, oh, I know how to feel, and now I feel sad. Okay. Ooh. Mm-hmm. And like fucking Venetus of like darkness. And Venice is like, but light. But that's darkness. That's it. The, the entire. Like, what the fuck? And then Sora's like, hey, and Vent's like, hey, shut the fuck up. <laughs> this is my <laughs> moment. I've I'm been light. in there for years, you <laughs> son of a bitch. I'm light. <laughs> Like, the idea Dark, that, that they just kept handing down Sora be like, oh, we think Sora's the best Keyblade wielder. Oh, oh, it's just a Keyblade wielder in his heart. But we think that Sora's <laughs> the pure... Lo- oh, no, we failed? Oh, we failed the thing. He oh, it's because it. Venice is in his heart. Yep. They, oh, this entire game is them going like, no, really, Sora's good, though. Yeah. Like, he's the, pretty good at this. They're like, bullshit. I totally agree with you. Like, they, they keep trying to oversell it now. Like, Sora's the main character... First, I mean, first of all, and they even talk about, um, what the fuck was they saying? Oh, with Venus with the fucking light thing. What, and with Sora. So the whole thing with Sora that drives me goddamn insane is, like, they, they talk about this in, uh, Dream Drop, and they let you kind of, like, sift with it, is Sora became the main character on accident. Riku was the original one that was mm. meant to be the original, and like, fucking crushed true, it. Yeah, and was fucking killing the game, and he followed Terra's like shadow unintentionally and it's perfectly so, yeah, again perfectly and fucking nailed it and goes like dark keyblade wielder loses it has a constant fucking battle with darkness which is a way cooler even like even when you're he's playing a deeper it. threshold yes. as a character and more and there's so much more exposition that's based on it he's tethered to more characters and it makes you feel for him because he is conflicted all the time because by they... the most evil people in the world yes and 100% like, in, inarguably Maleficent is worse of a person than Xehanort by the end of this series oh, the way yeah, yeah, that yeah. they show Xehanort in the very oh, ending fuck. coming to terms with oh, the new game oh my god are you I literally went oh so Maleficent's the big bad still though yeah well and not no not even that black so, box yeah well, it's, it's gonna be black box and it's gonna be Zigbar being, Which being uh, the that? best organization is, character, and I've been saying that for the longest time, and then that the, happened, and I went vindication. What is the fucking name? Uh, I can't think of it now. The the person who Zigbar really is the master. No, it's not the master. It's the it's the apprentice of the master. Because that's the other thing too. So in oh this, yeah, the one that shares the box and takes the master's yes, eye for the like, thing. Yes, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Zoo yeah. Whatever. Or sir, whatever the fuck. But anyway. But and then. Um, they did confirm to just really jumping off on a side note. They did uh, confirm in the secret cutscene at the end that the organization, well, the organization hood member that does the heart symbol with yeah. the over the moon, that is that person is the master of masters. They confirmed that that person oh, shit. in that cutscene. That is the first time. I mean, like, of course, we don't see or know who it is or anything. Yeah, but that is the first confirmed appearance, like the first of actual the master of the master. Which, like, so, there's, like, three things about what you just said that I'll try to dissect of other things that piss me off. So, Xehanort. What the fuck? He fuck in fucking Birth by Sleep. First of all, he's the biggest, he's the biggest asshole in this whole series. Entirely, like, they made asshole. him from the get-go. And you're telling me at the end of fucking three. Th- this is my, this is one of the huge things, overarching things I have with three. They didn't read their own fucking lore. They explained shit that got handed to them in a piece of paper. Mm-hmm. And then didn't decide to follow any of their own previous lore. They tried to go Eric or uh, they tried to go Xehanort going, Ericus, I've always been doing this to try to protect you. Bitch, Bullshit. you murked him in the back On in purpose. Birth by Sleep. You single handedly pretty betrayed much him. killed Yeah, you betrayed him and then on top of it, led Vent, split him, and then fucking indirectly made Vent kill him. Like not to mention Terra's entire development, evil arc. every bad thing that happened to the OG three yes. is because of Xehanort's absolute hubris and obsession with the dark. Yeah, nothing there is about I want to be strong enough. That to would be anything. You can't call shit. that a reveal when there is nothing leading it other than this immense lust for power, 100%. and them not going. Uh, well, we gotta do something yeah. for that. If they, if the, and 
on top of it too, even in this game, like even just in three. So let's even cut the like birth by sleep shit of previous. We see Xehanort literally at the end of the game. And that's it. We don't even see him throughout the game. So yeah. why at the end of this game? So even like if new people jumped in, they'd go, oh, okay. That's I guess. the bad guy. That's the best. <laughs> that's the best reaction Square Enix got was some fans going, oh, okay, I guess he's a good guy now. There's not a single yeah. person that went, oh, thank God he like changed his. He it's turned like, around. Fuck, yeah. No, he's fuck, an asshole. Fuck Everyone that. was going, hmm. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a stretch. I can't. I can't stand by it because. I refuse. It's ev- absurd. Everything that they did in this game was to make you realize that they are more underhanded than you even thought they could be. Yes. Every little part of it. It's it's like in a movie when they show you this dude beating some chick so you hate him later when he gets murked terribly. Yes. It's you're going, wow, Xehanort deserves to get his ass beat. Ansem is the shittiest, or Xemnas, I should even say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at this point, Xehanorts and Terranorts and all of this time traveling, yeah. every single Everything one is Everything that's evil. linked to Xehanort. Is, is a piece bad. of shit. It is bad. Mm-hmm. It is the darkness. Yep. He's the Palpatine of the universe, even, and they tried to make him a dad. And then what's even funnier is, like, so they try to give him the recovery. Like, they try to give him the upswing of, like, he's a hero. Fine. What is young Xehanort's last fucking words as he's getting murked? Yo, darkness will fucking rule. Like, fuck you. And he gets fucked. You know, even at a young age, he's a fucking yeah, asshole. He's it's such a prick. at his core. But no, but apparently when he plays chess... He's really cool. And the other, like, I even, so let's say this. If they wanted, this is another critique I have of the game, to further, like, just put story into this one that could have made the story better and I could have ran with it, was if they would have had Xehanort try to have a good arc, what they needed to do was have, like, a scene, like, right in the middle. Like, so he shows up at the beginning. This is my fake way that the game could have been better. Shows up at the beginning goes, Keyblade War. Like, fuck you, we're fucking going to war. And then... He has two, like, council meetings, you know, big fucking Star Wars-esque throne and shit. Yeah, <laughs> big Palpatine moment where he goes, go, my disciples, like, fucking go. But then he has, like, and this would have been the best if, um, and you know what? The DLC the DLC could do this, but they won't. They could <laughs> of do, course not. They could Again. do this, and they'll make this better. If, if Shion came back and they, you know, make up whatever bullshit, but Shion has, like, a conversation with Xehanort. And like sees, he changes his eyes a little bit, just well, like that. A, but even more so, like Xehanort's like crying to himself or something. Oh, okay. And just she to goes show humanity. Yes, just so she goes like, wait, what? And he's like, oh, like nothing, like fuck off, like. Bah. Yeah. And she's like, oh wait, you do get like you're you're you actually feel. hurting, you're hurting. So that's why you're being the asshole, like because they've had there's so many things that they could have copied and pasted. Like how many times have we heard that plot cliche of like, oh, the villains being the villain. But because he's actually the good guy and he just needs to put the whole, like, weight of the world on his back. But, like... It's a Doctor Doom bullshit. Yeah, it, and it's, it's, and it's, it's too not, much. And they do it so wrong and then even, like... Even Ericus doesn't even tell him the right way. It's not even, like, oh, you shouldn't be putting the world on your back. He literally just says, dude, you're too old. Just yeah. give it to the newbies. The, it, like, just let Young and fucking hold the fucking X-Blade. And now, what the fuck is with the goat man? In the end fight. Okay, so I I had to look up a lot of shit on this. I, now, so, I get that the goat was probably his, like, animal yep, orientation. That makes exa- sense. You're 100% right there. So, when he was... And this is... A, yet again, the game wastes extra amount of time talking about previous games and then doesn't do a lick to explain... All what's the, actually what's happening. What's actually happening yeah. in the fucking moments. Um, so, yeah. So, I looked up a lot. So... Uh, and they had to do an interview wanted to explain it. <laughs> good, good. So, that makes me feel like I'm not yep. dumb. So, Xehanort in all of the, uh, like, prequel-esque stuff before any part of the series. Yeah, his animal spirit thing was the goat. Ergo, that setup. Okay. But one part of the game that I, I still don't understand, it makes absolutely no sense, and I don't think they're ever going to take proper time to explain it, is why there is a Organization 13 before the Organization 13 made and why they're using the same weapons, and why... Because because even if they try... Like, even if, which isn't going to work, but even if they went, oh, well, everyone a part of the organization, their real people were a part of the organization before. First of all, bullshit. Yeah, which is not happening, but yeah, would make more sense happen- than what did. Exactly. And, like, it, it couldn't happen because you see individual people like Lee and fucking uh, Isa have... Mm-hmm. As kids, they're growing up and they're training. They don't become a part of the organization. They're doing their own thing. And that... Oh my god! And the like Zexion. The well, minute Ienzo, I yeah, mean, he's yeah, a child. Yeah. He's a the he's minute, a child. The minute they talked about DLC, all I wanted out of DLC was who the fuck 
is Lee and fucking Isa talking about? We still don't know. Yeah. There's the, still a mysterious woman. Their explanation woman. almost says Namine. Just the way that they, the, yeah. sh- the game, which clear it literally makes well, zero sense. I but thought, the context of the game just kept throwing that at what you. What I thought originally, and I thought it for a really long time, was um, Lark scene. And it made it checks it, out. And because uh, Axel and Lark scene have like multiple conversations in Rechain, they're the two with Marluxia that kind of like pseudo start the coup in yeah, the first yeah, place. Yeah, that's, that's so the So I tri- went like, triple. oh, that would be why Axel, because Axel was like the rebel. And then even I was like, oh, that would explain why Axel went to do his own thing anyway. Like, or, or like teamed up with anybody, because usually he's such the loner. So I was like, if Lark scene would have been the one to like convince him, like, okay, I'm running that track. True. But they've done multiple interviews now. The woman has never been shown in game. They have never said her name. And anyone you think that is her is not. So even worse. They haven't even introduced her yet. Even worse. I I was just like, so why the fuck, why even make this character? By the time they show her, it's just going to be some random face that isn't a previous character that has no ties to any part of the game. No impact. We're not going to give a shit. Even even if she looks like somebody, even if she looks like Nominate or fucking Shion, it's still fucking, disconnected. Nobody cares because it doesn't relate because we already know like Shion and fucking Nominate are way too much more tethered to fucking Kyrie and Sora directly. You know, being embodiments. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Directly anyway. So yeah, it's it. They just they they expanded lore and then didn't fucking answer it. And like to kind of like you know semi wrap this shit up like. I understand what they had to do for the end of this game. I understand that they wanted, their goal was, we are going to get 358 cast back. Necessity. We're going to get Birth by Sleep cast back. We're going to have the main cast back. You know, they're going to beat Xehanort. And Sora's going to start a new adventure. <laughs> and on paper, I'm totally on board. Yeah. But how lazy they went to do all of that. And like, like another thing too. And they're they're going to so drop the ball. Because I'm very excited to see what they can do, but the way how bad they told this story is, I'm officially, like, Kingdom Hearts 3, and this bums me out to say this so much, Kingdom Hearts 3 has officially got me to stop drinking the Kool-Aid. I am going to be horribly now skeptical. You're waiting for them to be good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm skeptical now of when they say, oh, we came out with the next game, I'm seriously going to be like... Yeah, but how is it, though? Yeah. Like, how is it really? And I've never done that before. I've no, never done that. Especially not with Kingdom Hearts yeah. in, 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 in recent years. Yeah. 2.8 was fantastic for all the three and a half hours it lasted. Yeah, exactly. For and even I, how short it was, I still played it. And it was still great. drank that shit up. Yeah, exactly. Fuck that demon tide. Which, I'll, I'll say this much. Yeah. Your, your concern with the mysterious woman that mm-hmm. Isa and Lee are talking about is my same fear for the master. At this point, yes. in this universe, if you are not showing someone's face... It is for a reason. Yeah. If you're showing them without a face being, like, visible or their voice is distorted or they're off in a corner, it's always because they are recognizable in that moment. Well, because... There's like, no good answer to prim- who the master could be and anymore. Pr- and prime example, going back to you referencing Kingdom Hearts 2 a lot, uh, the only other character that we've ever had mass that made a major impact was Diz. Yeah. And it completely made sense. And that was the minute, amazing. The minute Diz got revealed, we all went... Oh, holy fuck. I just feel like with the Zigbar reveal, they threw a dart at a board, picked an organization yes. member, and we're like, I oh, so it's agree. been Zigbar this whole time. I so It could agree. have been anyone. I will say, fuck yeah, it's my boy. But still, like, yeah. they, they threw a dart and said, all right, which one's going to be a Keyblade wielder? Boom. Uh, which one's yeah. going to be the big bad? <laughs> Boom. Uh, which one? And it, it, they just happen to be two of the better characters, in my personal opinion. Yep. But Iza, we don't know shit about his backstory. Yeah. Well, I mean, we kind of do, but not Semi, but yet again, not enough to, like... It's Feel just for disconnected. The guy. Exactly. They give you so many characters, which is the ga- the the guarantee for Kingdom Hearts, mm-hmm. but then they decide who they're going to go in depth in, and then they wrapped up a franchise in 9 to 11 video games and still <laughs> didn't give me enough explanation yeah. of who everyone was. And That's too many people. And even worse, like, your best villain. Like, I'll, I will I don't even care. I, I will argue with anybody, even he, in these next co- no. upcoming <laughs> games. <laughs> <laughs> Got it memorized though, no, but like literally the 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 best villain Kingdom Hearts ever had was Xehanort, and they and because he he fucked with multiple games, they even put effort into giving him backstory lore of he's the hooded dude in Kingdom Hearts one that tells Sora to go through darkness, and he's the one who first fucking plots to fuck up Destiny Island and get it taken over. I'm like, this is all good. I'm sorry, but like, so the Master of Masters 
first of all, is a bad guy. All right. Which, I, that first, sucks, but don't even, fine. I, first of all, the game... And this is what's so funny, because I've talked to so many people, because the only... The only franchise of the game that I'm not too familiar with that I've had talked to a lot of people about is Union. Because mm-hmm. Union's a lot of prequel shit. A lot. Uh, it's it's everything. It's literally yeah. all the prequel shit. And I've talked to a lot of people about it, but what I still find funny is no one can even answer me the question of why the Master of Masters is even evil or why he has to be. Why can't it be like so like um like a game, I mean, just to reference another game really quick, like one of my favorite games of all time that I'm replaying is Tales of Vesperia. And one of the best parts... Yuri one, Lowell, yeah, my love. And one of the best parts about that game is literally uh, the the last fight is against Duke, who's the greatest hero of all time. Just good. Yeah. he's Just good. He's a good person who is doing a fucked up thing, which is why we're trying to stop him. Which but at the sense. end of the day, he is a hero. Like, you don't necessarily... And that's what sometimes makes the fights better. It doesn't necessarily have to be a bad guy. The Master Masters could be, like... It, they could make him the greatest good guy, and if anything, have Sora question why he's a good guy, and, like, really put him in check of, like, dude, I know I'm good. Here's my fucking achievements. What the fuck have you done? Yeah. Threw a Keyblade on accident and somehow made friends, you loser? Like, yeah. how the fuck did that... Like, really put him in check. But no... They're going to make him a generic evil bad guy. They'll eventually show his face. It's the puppet master. Yeah. The one pulling all the strings while all this evil's going on. The but- thing, and I'm, and I'm, I really do mean this. This is going to be the thing that's going to fuck. Like, <laughs> this is the one theory I had. Lay it on me. After the game ended. And it's, I'm, I'm going to be so mad. I'm calling, I'm saying this now because in 10 years, that's where we're going to find out it's going to be possible. But I'm, I'm fucking going to kill myself. If the fucking Master of Masters has a bloodline tied to Sora, and if that is how, oh, that's no. how, that's how they're gonna like you Don't know what I'm saying. Put that into the universe. You know what I know, and I'm serious because I I had a ter- it literally was a thought that like woke me up in the middle of the night and I went. It's Sora's parents. No, I went. I went. I seriously went. I went. No, they can't do that. They won't do it. They won't do it. And it's gonna be. It's gonna be like. It, this is totally made up, and I'm serious. Like, it's gonna be Master Master was a good guy, and he fucking taught everybody, and everything was great, and he had a wife, and then he fucking banged this bitch and got Sora, and then someone, and then darkness got a hold of his like wife, and then killed his wife. Oh so he's god. like, no, his wife's the darkness. Yeah. Oh focus. my god, or like some shit, like something. They they keep going That's down Eason. death enough. Ezen Lee's female is <laughs> <Yeah>. Sora's mom, <laughs> and she's been married to the Master of Masters this whole time, and then. The Master of Masters is actually, they used to call him the Yellow Flash. And then, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So Sora becomes the Nine Tails and and. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. It's, I'm like, oh, it's so, that that's the thing that horrifies me of like how, how that could go wrong. Uh, Cause, oh, uh, but what I was saying about that though was like, so Xehanor was like the ultimate bad guy because he tethered so much. You put in this new guy just to make him a bad guy, it's not going to matter. No. And... And this whole new journey is starting with Sora going like, I'm going to rescue Kyrie," And it's so bad, the whole fucking rest of the cast went like, all right, we're not fucking going with you. Like, <laughs> fuck off. And even Mickey's like, hey, no, we can help him out. And Riku's like, oh, boy. Nope. And Riku's <laughs> even like, no, bitch. Like, yeah. you can take me anywhere. I'm good. You can literally take me to the depth of darkness. We ain't going with this motherfucker. Like, this motherfucker crazy. Like, it, it's ugh. to play nine games hoping that Sora, Kyrie, and Riku get to hang out. They don't hang out yeah. at all in the third one. Yes! And I was mad the whole time. We don't even I was have just waiting it. for them to bro out. They don't even... Them interacting at the end of the the, the very end cutscenes where Kyrie and Sora are sitting on the tree and they share the palpu fruit and like yep. all that. I'm just sitting there going like, why isn't Riku also on that tree with them? Yeah. At it's least, not their romance. It is their friendship. Yep. Their triad. Because that's what they've talked about now too. Like the, their whole thing is saying like, stop waiting for Sora and Kyrie to make out. Like it's not no, going to happen. No, they're not a couple. Yeah. They are best friends they're the best same friends. way that Sora and Riku are. And it's so fucked up that they're not keeping the unity of it. And it's now, and if, and my whole thing is this, like this is so backwards now. Like if you're going to make a game where Sora is running his whole way just to save Kyrie. This I'm sorry, it's bullshit that they're not gonna at least have some type of beyond friendship emotional setup. Yeah, you you almost have to make that jump, but to spend a decade on denying that relationship, yeah. and then, it would just be so forced. And then literally setting up, and then literally like that, that's what's so like backwards about the whole thing. Like, yeah, I'm on the same page. Like they say, like no, stop expecting a relationship. And even in the back of my mind, I'm like, all right, whatever. But I'm like, all right. I'll understand that, but you're telling me you're going to start, in theory, a whole new trilogy, potentially, and base it on the crux of Sora literally saving the damsel in distress? Like, fuck off. Like, come on. 
It's the worst because in the games and the worlds that you go to, that is the story because they're old. Yeah. That's it. You can't put out a new story that is Sora Saves the Damsel in Distress, which is also a goddamn Keyblade wielder. Yes! And probably better at it than him. Yeah. Kyrie will pass the mark of mastery oh, before... Yeah. Yeah, easily. And, and I'm, I'm and just the worst in this... part, and on a side note, real quick too. The worst part about that is too. You know, it's going to be something that they don't even show. No, like of course like, oh, not. By the way, I'm a I got it. That. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, gonna... it's going to be ridiculous for them to focus so on the concept of a triad: mm -hmm. three best friends, Sora, Donald, Goofy, Lee, and. I mean, fuck, we don't know about the third one, yeah, but yeah, Lee's yeah. entire party I'll there. You one. have Roxas, Axel, and Shion. You mm -hmm. have like. Every single party yeah, yeah, is yeah. the trio, and then to take that away from the ending, I was so furious. Yep. I would have rather watch Sora, Riku, and Kairi hold hands and walk out into the ocean yes. and sink to their deaths than watch the end <laughs> cutscene of just them being like, we're still friends. Like, yep. duh. No fucking shit. Yep, 100%. Like, so, to kind of... For uh, real reels, close shot. Yeah, to, like, to, put, to put a lid at least on that. Just at least a couple things, though, that could be good that won't be as good. And this is already <laughs> stuff, and I hate this because I already keep thinking about it. Optimism, like, Nick. You gotta, you gotta be know, optimistic. I know. And the thing, like, so my favorite cast out of most of them is the 358 cast. They, they're, they're my favorite. Crush. They're my favorite. They're one. perfect. And so I, what I want now is because they've built up this setup, I want another 358 game. Not call it that because the whole setup of course, is very yeah. different now. But, but get but that another, cast. Yeah. Because they intentionally built that cast. And what I really want so badly, which would be so good and such a good way to get people on the fucking feels train, is have a birth by sleep cast reunion and have them go on their own. Like, not even a major mission. Like, nothing to save the world. Just like, to just, be together. Just to, like, uh, hey, go to these couple worlds that are still filled Another with darkness. Another notable and, and, triad. Yeah, and, like, balance out stuff. But what I want them to go through is, like crazy because all three of them went through so much shit i want them to like go through ps like ptsd and, and have like deal with coping and, exactly with it. because we didn't get that in this one at all and have them be like real like Tara being like i don't even like i finally have my body back like i don't even know what to do i don't and even then, feel like myself exactly Venice in the same boat in the opposite direction 100 percent. and then like aqua being like i lived in the fucking darkness, darkness like yeah and just like and have that and then have them be able to bond because of their pain but they don't do anything, at least in this game, to do that. And that would be so... that They would automatically... I mean, like, they fight with my 358 cast of being, like, best group. But, like, they would blow it fucking out of the park if they made a Easily. game just on them and then really fucking harped on that. That would... Oh, that's what I want. And they're not going to do it. And that's all I want. There's though. deeper Ugh. emotional turmoil in the scene where Riku tells Sora, you don't really believe that. When Sora's crying and upset about it, yep. then the entire reunion of the OG3. Which is I'm, so fucked up. It's... it's Disastrous yeah. because Sora through the entire games is happy go lucky Sora, and then the one time he breaks down, I didn't even feel the impact of it because it's just like, dude, like you are telling the person who had his body snatched by the fucking dark side, mm -hmm. oh, we're hopeless now, as he runs head force into a thing that they needed to make a mobile game to fight back. <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? There's no reason for Sora to be the way he is at all. I'm, that is the best fucking description of that. That was it. I, did, I was like, who the, the fuck they, is this white-haired kid? They needed to make a mobile game for it. Oh, that was it. Fuck, you're so right. You're so fucking right. And that's and that's another thing, too. Like, they talk about exposition on so many points. And then, yeah, they don't even bring up Union. No. So when you even get that scene, you just go, wait, who is that? Oh, oh cool. Oh, I'm surfing oh, on Keyblades. Yeah. Oh, I'm surfing on Keyblades. Cool. cool. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Well, Luna, thank you so much for briefing about this for so long. <laughs> can I can I give you one closing question? Oh, oh, oh God, okay. Do you think they're going to put Sora in Super Smash Brothers <laughs> Ultimate? <laughs> I'm just saying. That's all I'm saying. Let me think. Let me, hold on. Let me really think about this. They, my gut reaction is to definitely say no, but honest to God, I never in my wildest dreams, thought they would have put Joker in. Joker's the last fucking thing I ever would have thought of. I never, and I went, Sora I and never. Goku and Banjo-Kazooie can happen now because Persona's 100%. in it now. hundred percent. That's it. The fact that they put Joker in, I'm like, there's no rules. I fucked a teacher in Persona 5 and now I get to fight Bayonetta with him. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, how? They, you know what? They could. They very well They could. fucking could. They so could.
It checks out. They really could. And it would be a good 100%. intro for Kingdom Hearts 3 on the Switch and everything. Oh, yeah. man. That's what they're going to do. Yep. Final mix that on is the what Switch. They're and they're going to put Sora Sor- in. Sora's going to be the last DLC. Oh, God. And when they do their DLC for Shion, they're going to come out with a Kingdom Hearts 3 complete edition yep. and a simultaneous release. Boom. We saw it. You, <laughs> and if you pre order Kingdom yeah. Hearts 3 complete, you get Sora as a free character in Super Smash Bros. That's, I'm calling it. Early release. We're, Early call, we're calling it. We're calling on the podcast right yeah. fucking now. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Ugh. Yeah, that would suck. But oh, I'm sorry. real hyped if they do it. <laughs> I'll still play. Good Lord. All right. Well, Luna, thank you again. Thank yeah. you so much for it's being here. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> Um, next time, which there definitely will be next time, next time uh, I have you on. I'm never um, doing this again. <laughs> I'm so offended. <laughs> Fuck you, man. No, yeah, for uh, sure. No, no, no. Next time I have you on, we'll definitely talk about either something more normal or at least not bitch about Kingdom Hearts 3 as much. Oh, by then we'll be able to talk about Kingdom Hearts 3.5 and... Uh... <laughs> no, 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 no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold oh, on. and Virum Rex. Yeah, there it is. Hold on. So first of all, I'm going to definitely have you on the podcast at least within a year. Fair King, point. Kingdom Fair Hearts point. 3.5, we're not hearing about That's for the 20 year reunion. Yeah, 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 okay. (laughs) Jesus Christ. All right, listeners, on that note, uh, good evening, good night, and as always, good luck. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.